But I think people have to realize is we get into a real recession, which by the way, we have not seen in years and years and years. COVID was not a real recession. Hello everyone. Today, the master trader Gareth Soloway talks about the stock market, Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, and about AI, and suggests that the S&P market could go down significantly as well as all major assets. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Bitcoin BTC starts a new week in a precarious position after experiencing its most extensive losses since November. In a major come down from 10 month highs, BTC slash USD lost around 10% before the weekly candle finally closed. At around $27,600, the culmination of a grim few days for long traders means that BTC slash USD is now caught battling for last month's support. Market participants are in two minds as to how the situation might play out. Some are betting on deeper downside, while others remain confident of retesting those multi-month highs. Catalysts may come in the form of United States macroeconomic data releases later in the week, while markets are also gearing up for the next Federal Reserve interest rate decision. Wall Street is wrong about the Federal Reserve's interest rate path, according to former PIMCO chief economist Paul McCulley. Barring a surprise jump in inflation, he believes mounting economic pressures will convince the Fed to stop hiking rates next month. It would be a pause and then a pivot later this year. Hey, Gareth, we're kind of breaking down here a little bit today. Uh, Tesla pulling some weight uh, again or what? Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, definitely a recipient of the Tesla earnings, the uh, the spaceship that exploded. Um, and I also think this is options expiration. I mean, the market got lulled into this float by the dip higher. And then here we are late in options expiration where the institutions are now pushing things the other way to maximize their gains on the options that they sold. So there's a bunch of different things going on here in the market. Overall, I remain very bearish on the macro based on the fact that the Fed has told us that there's a mild recession coming. And I think what's important important to continue to remember is that if the Fed says mild, we know it's probably going to be worse per their issues with transitory inflation. Mm. All right. So it sounds like uh, you and Jim kind of have a similar overlap in your macro view as we heard ultimately he thinks that uh, the Fed will return to applying some pressure here despite what the market thinks. I know that Tesla, you also though had been as a trader kind of preparing for a little bit of a, uh, a big event on the chart. What door do you think this opens for either Tesla specifically or the kind of Tesla related high beta trades. Yeah, so I, I think that's the key, right? We've seen crypto go nuts. We've seen Tesla go nuts. NVIDIA has been on fire as well. So all of these different stocks that are high beta names have been on rip roaring rallies. And I think this is the unwind now. They've kind of the, the market and the players, the bigger players have lulled most people into thinking this dip buying is what's going to work again. The markets are going to return to their uh, 2021 guidance and, and kind of thrill level. And I don't think that that's going to happen. Again, you have a macro data point that, that we continue to see weakening across the board and ultimately Tesla is telling you that that their margins are shrinking they've had to cut prices of cars five six times just in the last couple months and again you have to take that for what it's worth and then Elon's being straight up he's telling you what they're doing and there's a reason you don't cut prices when your demand is super high okay um, the knock-on effect here as you mentioned uh, you know with the whole high beta rally of crypto with Tesla together the chips uh, if we do see this kind of open the door to the downside, do you envision the market lumping that stuff together or will we see these AI plays in the chip space go their own way? I mean, is it a pipe dream to think the market could have separation and dispersion or are we going to trade in big chunks like we always do? No, I think I think the momentum plays, even the AI plays are going to get hit. And again, you have to keep in mind that the AI technology is is sexy. It's awesome to think about. But in reality, how long is it going to take to generate significant amounts of revenue off of that? You're talking years out. So so just like we saw with the solar stocks back in the day, that was the hottest trade. We saw the marijuana stocks. That was the hottest trade. You know, the market and investors get really hyped up about amazing stories. But ultimately, it's when does that revenue come through? And once people realize it is a while away that premium starts to come out of them just a little bit 
All right, uh, so bearish on that group basically at the moment. We kind of call it the high beta trade. What about the mm -hmm. Giants? Um, I, I know that you're sort of a skeptic of the notion of big caps being a safety trade, but uh, you know the market's kind of treated them like that. Where do you think you know Microsoft and, and Apple fit into this? Yeah, so so for me, I look at the the Apple daily chart, and it continues to be up into a major level here, 168 to 171, huge resistance. It's not that far from its all time highs. And I keep coming back to what the Fed said recently about a mild recession. And even if it is a mild recession, that means you know people are going to struggle to pay their bills. And and the idea of them of investors or or consumers paying up for the next iPhone when it's 1,300 bucks or so, to me seems a little silly when they could push it off a few months. And if you just start getting getting people to push off that kind of new phone a few months, it really will take its toll on Apple. So I understand people look at Apple and say, oh, it's an old trusty company. It's going to do great no matter what. But I think people have to realize is that we get into a real recession, which, by the way, we have not seen in years and years and years. COVID was not a real recession. It was a quick dip. The markets were back to all-time highs within a couple months. We haven't seen a real recession since 2008, 2009, in my opinion. So that could be a game changer for how people deal with Apple and Microsoft and even some of these like NVIDIA. Okay. The um, uh, potential here for these tech trades to break down then, does that uh, accelerate uh, the recession uh, case, uh, Gareth? Do you think that we're going to be having that conversation again soon? I do, I do, and in fact, I have it priced in where we probably by year end see 3,300 on the S&P 500. I think within 2024, 3,000 on the S&P 500. And so I'm preparing. You know, right now I've been building short positions in the market and kind of slowly inching in at these levels, waiting for that volume to return, waiting for us to get more clarity from these earnings from the big players over the next couple of weeks, and just be ready for the jobs numbers to really weaken significantly. And I think as soon as the market comes to the realization that there is a session coming and the fed cannot print us out at these levels or at these these kind of inflation points that's going to be a shock to the market and really kind of kickstart a lot of this big selling okay uh gareth the one thing that you do like here uh because this is obviously distinctly bearish tone in your uh voice yeah. here today uh long term looking abroad in particular going down to brazil for a little uh, long vacation in okay. ewz is that right that's right. And that, that's actually had a really nice pop over the last couple of weeks. Um, again, I think that's the play right now is to look outside of the U.S. to stories where uh, they've been dealing with other things and have gotten on better tracks. And, and I think the U.S. now becomes kind of a place where money rotates out. If we remember ever since 2009 and the Fed printing of money, money has come across overseas into the U.S. So it's due to see a little bit of an outflow. And I think you have to start looking at a lot of these South American countries as potential next opportunities for good upside. For short-term momentum to shift in favor of the bulls, I think we need to see price get and stay above this range. It continues to act as resistance. The latest data from the Binance order book, meanwhile, showed resistance increasing at $28,000. According to monitoring resource material indicators, this was an attempt to push spot prices lower in order to fill bids at more appealing levels. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.